It took Squid Game just four weeks this past fall to become the most watched Netflix show ever, released in any language. But when it comes to the streaming giant's global ambitions, what happened afterward matters even more. Viewers who devoured Squid Game started watching more shows in Korean. Bloomberg's Lucas Shaw joins us now to talk about his latest Bloomberg Big Take. And Lucas, I was one of those viewers. It unlocks so much more content. Talk to us about the power of this phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, Netflix recognized the, the potential in Korea around the time it first went there, which was back in 2016, as, as was the case in a lot of places outside the U.S. where Netflix first went. It, it struggled in the first few years, didn't add a lot of customers, didn't have a lot of programming people wanted to watch. But starting in about 2019, thanks to deals it did with a lot of companies in Korea and, and then the development and production of original shows, it's really produced a number of popular shows in Korea, so much so that if you look at the, the data that Netflix now releases every week, South Korea contributes kind of the second largest number of popular shows or top 10 shows for Netflix behind the US, more than any other market. Um, and, and that's been a key, not just to adding customers in, in South Korea, but all across Asia and, and delighting viewers pretty much everywhere. Asia is so vast, so many different cultures, countries, so much color. Where else will Netflix go to find more stories like this? Well, it's it's three biggest markets in Asia right now are Australia, which almost doesn't count because it's English speaking. They went there early. They've had a lot of success kind of from day one. And then Japan and, and South Korea, which are its two strongest markets right now, also the places supplying the, the most number of popular shows, not just in Asia, but everywhere. South Korea because of just a lot of scripted programming and then Japan because of anime. Netflix had identified India as a sort of third other key market in the region. It's a place where it's had far less success in South Korea and in Japan and India has has bedeviled you know many a Western media company I think you'll also see them try to find some openings in parts of Southeast Asia you know they their executives talked to us about making shows uh, in in Thai for those in Thailand and maybe some shows in, in Mandarin for Mandarin speakers across Asia Surely Netflix doesn't have a lock on this strategy now. We all know it worked. You know, how can the competitors keep up? And, and how much of an advantage does Netflix have given all of the data they have from their viewers? Right now, Netflix has a pretty big advantage, uh, not just because of some of the data it has about what people want to watch, but also because it is so much bigger in a lot of these markets. You know, it has a it has a big head start in South Korea over places like Disney Plus and HBO Max and Amazon. That's not true everywhere. Amazon is is bigger than Netflix in both Japan and in India, and is about to make a big push into Southeast Asia. Disney Plus is massive in India, largely because of its cricket rights that it got from this company, Hotstar. But I think by and large, Netflix. Is is seen as the market leader in most of these countries and has invested a lot more resources. They're all trying to catch up, but Netflix tends to be of the opinion that as long as it continues to make shows that people want to watch, it's going to keep growing.